I am Charlotte and welcome to the Seafood Boil virtual cooking class. Joining me today, as always, is the talented chef Scott Tompkins. Thank you for joining. Always so much, so many compliments. I always feel so warm and fuzzy here when I'm with, uh, with you in this space. Thanks for, thanks for having me. I'm excited for this class. Yes, the seafood boil class. I'm actually excited for this class too. Um, we are doing two, we're calling it a seafood boil class, not just a crawfish boil class. I wanted to point that out because we are doing two wonderful um, seafood boils. We're going to do a Louisiana style crawfish boil and then we are going to do a New England style clam bake, which is um, one of my personal favorites. So we called it the seafood boil. So much um, crustaceans, so much shellfish. It's absolutely wonderful. I'm very excited about this. Um, in addition, to our two wonderful seafood boils, we are actually gonna make an aioli. And I think that it's a wonderful recipe and tool to keep in your toolbox. It's a classic, classic thing. Um, and we also thought that maybe you needed to do, needed to see something, um, my hands do something other than, you know, standing over a pot. Yeah, so, and, um, and watch the blender also do something. Very, very excited. Full disclosure, everyone. Um, before we get started, I am not a huge crawfish person. Are you a crawfish person, Tompkins? You know, uh, this is bittersweet for me because yeah. I'm excited because uh, the sweet part is I'm actually going to see uh, a smaller, like more weeknight style crawfish yes. we're going to do. But I'm upset yes. because, you know, growing up, uh, I didn't get to be a part of those like giant parties yes. where they came over and like you did the huge crawfish bowl in the backyard yes. and there's like food on the table and it's kind of spilled it out and it's all like over the place. I never got to really do that. As an adult, I did, but I didn't get to grow up with that. So it's like, you know, that's the bitter part. It's, Sweet part is we're doing it now. It's a lot of fun. I'm so glad that you're actually here to do this. So this is a lot of fun. These Both of these recipes, and I'm glad that you said um, that whole thing about the, you know, growing up with all the, you know, spill the food out on the table. Everybody yeah. enjoys it. Um, what I think is so great about um, both of these dishes is that they are steeped in that sort of tradition and friends and family. And part of a like a seafood boil is that um, you know, people gather and you and you drink a beer and you drink a glass of wine and you're with your friends and um, you're outside, right? And you're enjoying each other. And it's typically in um, the summer months. So I think crawfish boil is between January and July, um, peak season being um, March, April, May. And then um, like a New England style clam bake. So typically they would do them um, there on the beach, right? So you're outside, they dig a big pit in the, in, in the sand, heat up some rocks, throw the rocks in there, cover it with some seaweed, throw in some clams, lobsters, crabs, whatever, cover it with a burlap sack and let it steam. And so again, outside, like at the beach, like outdoors with your friends and family. And um, we're gonna take these things inside and make them a little bit smaller so they're not you don't need to do 100 pounds um, of crawfish right. or clams. You could do it, you know, just a small amount. Good note to that, um, if you are going to scale a recipe, um, so 10 pounds of crawfish would yield about a pound and a half of like picked tail meat. So if you are doing um, a couple of people or a few more people than four, you know, you can sort of scale that way if that's helpful. How much can you eat? Like an all you can eat, Clam bake is that's the style Clam, that I think yeah. people want to go to, where there's just endless amounts of crawfish and seafood, and you just eat until you have to drink, and then you drink some more, and then you eat some more. I that's think how I picture it in my mind. I don't. I don't know if I could do like a ten pound thing. Like I don't know no? if I have the like, you know. You get your exercise peeling all those crawfish. There's I mean, no doubt you definitely it. work those fine motor skills. <laughs> so let's get to our Louisiana crawfish boil. Um, so again, like I said, not a huge crawfish crawfish person. Do you call them crawfish or crawdads? Uh, crawfish. Well, can I, we, we did some fun, uh, we did you do know, some, some, fun. some digging, yes. uh, some names. So there's, there's, I think most people are used to saying crawfish because yeah. that's what's on like Louisiana hot yeah. sauce, all these things. But there's a, there, depending on where you grew up, they're also known as uh, crawdads, crayfish, mud Cray bugs, mud ditch bugs, bugs, mud bugs, freshwater lobsters, mountain okay. lobsters. And I think my favorite one of all of them is <laughs> Yabbies, Yabby. which I believe Never is more Australian, okay. but still, Yabby's a great okay. name. I do know they are very popular in France and New Zealand. I read that. Yeah, I read that. Uh, okay, so to get started with our Louisiana crawfish boil, in this pot right here in front of me, I have a couple of quarts of water and some beer, and I've gone ahead and added in here 
um, some of the Louisiana um, crawfish boil concentrate and some of the actual dried, um, the dried powder seasoning and um, some onions and some lemons. So something interesting that I found out like doing my research, so even, like I said, not a crawfish person, but I am smart enough to do my research. Um, creating a crawfish boil, like people that are truly passionate from that area, like it's very personal, very personal, like the way, um, you know, Texans are about chili or the way a person is um, with, their, with their coffee. So people like a specific seasoning, some people do no seasoning. Um, it's very interesting, right? Um, I, I, it blew my mind. So um, a gentleman that works at HB, he actually doesn't season at all um, in, during the, the boiling process. He actually um, seasons dry afterwards. So I thought that so was very interesting. Like, so it's really yeah. so he probably likes a more pungent kind yeah. of you know cook them a little bit right? and then season them afterwards. They're real heavy. So also just a quick note because uh, Rob has set up the sky cam. You saw those beautiful pots. So every single pot that's on the stove you yes. can buy at HEB. Yes. Okay, guys, so in this pot, like I said, I've got some of my seasoning, I've got some water, I've got a little bit of beer, whatever beer you guys want to use, and I've added in my potatoes and my corn. So I added cold things to a hot pot, so we need to bring that up to a boil, um, back up to a boil, and I'm on medium-high heat. We're going to cover this lid, um, cover this with a lid, and we're going to let this cook for about 10 minutes before we bring in our crawfish. So while that's happening, um, in this pot right here, this is a five-quart um, Dutch oven, we are going to add in um, a little bit of wine. So we're going to start our New England-style clam bake, right? So medium-high heat. Would you give that the Scott pour of wine? You had, I heard you say a little bit, but I just want to know, would you give so, it the Scott pour of wine? It's like half for the pot, <laughs> half for me, right? So That's I'm exactly actually right. using um, a the Santola Vino Verde, one of my personal favorites. Um, Vino Verde is a beautiful wine. It's a Portuguese um, Portuguese wine. It's very clean. It's very crisp. Um, it has a light effervescence to it, so it's really nice for a hot day. So if you were doing this, you know, on a Sunday afternoon, it's a little bit for the glass, a little bit for your the pot. Um, but Chef, big we got fan. a quick question for you. I love the Vino Verde. Uh, Susie Lee, love yes. the name Susie Lee, the way she spells it. Does the liquid amount change if we're going to cut the recipe to like a quarter? So. Um, would that be for, uh, yes, on both, on both accounts, right? So, so um, depending on the size of your pot and how much you're cooking. So that is a very great question. So for the, um, the crawfish, you want to make sure everything can be submerged, right? And that includes your potatoes, corn, um, crawfish, sausage, everything, right? Um, and then for the New England style, um, clam bake, what we want is we want a little bit of liquid in the bottom and we're going to create this really neat platform um, or like base with our onions, um, sausage and corn and then we're going to put the seafood on top of that so we're going to have a steaming effect so you don't want to submerge but that's a great question. I got another great I question. Sandy also wants to know, she bought three different ones due to availability. I just don't know which crab boil seasoning to use. She's referring to crab boil seasoning. And like okay. you said earlier, I think everybody's different on, Yes. because each one has a different amount of spice. Yes. We just Give her a little of your so insight on So that's a great question, right? And so that that depends on um, like personal preference, right? And so when we're doing this in small batches, like this is the great a great place to test. You can always go lighter in your boiling liquid, and then later after we're done, we've let everything sit and marinate. You can go back and season with dry seasoning if that makes sense, right? Um, also know that if you're going to do the the boil in batches. The last batch you do is going to be super salty because all of that salt is going to concentrate as the water evaporates out. Yeah, Sandy, that, that's a great question. The, uh, I think I, they can all be a little different. I think it just depends on your taste. Yeah. Most of the Louisiana and the Zatarans are, are a little similar. Obviously, yeah. they're going to have different spices. I don't want to call them the same, but they're, uh -oh. you know, just uh, try one and then go, all right. I don't have, I don't actually have a favorite. Um, you can also make the seasoning yeah. from scratch. You right? can. So you just go and I did write down on. those ingredients. I think there's like... 13 um, different kind of spices. So it's like coriander and celery seed, mustard, a whole bunch of things. Um, and I did come across a couple of recipes um, on the line. But we have uh, various different, different recipes. And the back of the box, like these guys, they're so smart. The back of the box is um, pretty good about telling you um, the ratio of seasoning or, or concentrate to the liquid, right? Which is there pretty you fair. go. I like it. Good stuff. All right, so we're gonna get we're getting ready for our um, our clams over here. Our wine is probably boiling a little bit. I'm gonna take these onions over so there. A little mirepoix, kind of sort of. Yeah. You got a, little, a little lemon in there. Throw it off, but you got the onions, we'll all throw flavor some onion. builders. 
We'll do some lemon. Building flavor. That's what I, even if you didn't grow up, you know, say like me, you didn't grow up doing all this stuff, like the clam bakes yeah. and all this stuff. It's really interesting because you are building this court bouillon, this really flavorful yeah. liquid with which anything would taste good poached in it. So whether it's crawfish Absolutely fantastic. or you go, hey, I want yes. other fish or shrimp or octopus or whatever it is, there's, there's a million different ways to use that flavorful liquid. It's very, that, it's very classic, that court bouillon. Um, Say that again for me, Tom. Court blue, blue, blue Thank That's you. The same. It's the same. It's Thank regional, you. regional dialect. It's fine. You, you were there. <laughs> we're going to add a little bit of garlic in here. Um, yes. Yeah, so like, it's like white wine. This, you know, I mean, this bottle has a crab on it. It was made for um, shellfish, but that lemon, that citrus, that acid is really, really good. And um, the items that we're going to throw in here are really kind of like, shellfish is almost sweet right like yeah. it has like a kind of like a it sweet does. note to it um i'm gonna add in some bay leaf um which is really um typical of a, a clam bake and i'm gonna throw in some thyme just because we have it and i like it and it does add a really nice flavor so we did our onions some thyme a little bit of salt in here i'm gonna give this a little stir so good base good All base right. going down i'm gonna throw in a couple of potatoes right now Ooh, ooh slippery ooh, so obviously slippery. when it comes to the the when you're supposed to add all these different yeah. things, I think people get a little bit confused as it'd be like, well, how do I know when to add what? And I think obviously with your crawfish and your shrimp, you'll add those at the last minute. Absolutely. Your potatoes and those things, sausage and corn can go in obviously first because it'll take those, a little longer. Yep, you want those items to go in first because it takes it takes longer to cook. But um, it, don't worry about overcooking your crawfish or overcooking your shrimp or overcooking anything because what you're going to do is as these things, especially this, craw this crawfish boil, you're, we're going to add the crawfish, add the sausage. We're gonna let it boil for a few moments. We're gonna turn it off and we're gonna let it sit, right? Um, and this is one of those things that like, as I was asking people like, what are the most important steps in doing a crawfish boil? Um, it's this point of letting it sit, right? With the fire off. And you let all of these spices and flavors sort of um, marry with like the, the shells from the shrimp and the crawfish and the corn and all of these different flavors and they all just sort of marry together. And the only thing I can compare it to really is like when you let a, a, like a roast rest um, or like a piece of fish or something, a, a protein after it comes out of the oven or out of the pan and everything has the opportunity to Reabsorb, reabsorb and, and relax, relax, right? And that's how you yep. get that spicy goodness, like inside, right? And you're basically making a, I mean, it's a really flavorful stock is what you've got there. Exactly. Really well seasoned, heavily seasoned right? stock. Okay, so our potatoes are going in here. Um, we're gonna let this go also for about 10 minutes and then we're gonna add in the rest of our shell, our shellfish. Man. Shellfish? Shellfish. Don't be shellfish. Um, meanwhile, let me grab our crawfish and I wanna talk a little bit about crawfish. I've got some guys right or here. Or our crawdads. Our crawdads. <laughs> Okay, so a um, couple of notes. Again, we said 10 pounds of fresh live crawfish will yield about one um, and a half pounds of tail meat. Um, don't worry, we're adding a bunch of delicious things to that pot. So you still have the corn, the potatoes, and um, that sausage. So as you can see, I've got a clean bowl right here. I've got a wet towel, and then I have um, a bag of ice. So crawfish don't like to be um, wet, right? Um, they like to be damp and they like to be cold, but not... Um, so not fully submerged right? in water is where you want right? to... Right, um, and right now they're kind of um, they're kind of asleep, right? They, the cold sort of makes them tired. And I'm going to show you guys what we're... <laughs> just, a little, just, ha just having a little nap. They're just having a little, a little nap, right? Nap. Let's see here. I think what you said is great about the, uh, the adding, because if, if, yeah. if you live in a household where you're a split decision on, yeah. like I don't like crawfish, but my husband likes crawfish or vice exactly. versa, you can go exactly. hey, add a bunch of the inclusions so that everybody exactly. can be happy and exactly. everybody gets what they need. Um, so what we're looking for in a crawfish, and these guys are kind of super cold, but you want a crawfish that is going to, they're, they're going to wake up a little bit. I you want, want them to come at you. Yeah. right you want them to come at you you also want to make sure that you wash your, your crawfish you don't need to submerge them in salt water you don't need to like quote unquote purge them but they do need to be washed so they do live in the mud they do live in the grass so you want to Just rinse like them with Give cold them water fresh cold water until the water comes clean these guys are kind of cold we're gonna let them warm up yeah, it's a great note because you don't want that yeah. gritty sandiness in your potato when you're taking absolutely. a bite or your sauce absolutely you right nice clean and then um you also want to discard any dead ones and you'll know that they're dead right away because they won't move at all right they won't be ready to party. They crawfish what? like to party. They move, they their, do. They move crawfish their hands like up to party like they're at a concert. And they move won't, their hands up. Yeah. 
They're Can starting to move party. around a little bit. They were cold in there. All right. So now we're going to do the and we're going to add the andouille sausage. This is something that I think is really interesting, right? So like um, seafood boils, like you know, from Louisiana crawfish boils, right? So we have that definitely in Houston, all the way up to New England, where um, so what, like with the clam bake or a Portuguese style, um, where they use um, linguiça sausage there's all there's there's like fundamentals that are always there right so there's the potato the sausage the corn um and then that liquid right and this flavorful liquid i think it's really um even though they're different they're still the same i love the uh portuguese linguine it's so good it's so good right and it's hard to find so um it is. i went to school in rhode island plan. and there's a there's a really large um portuguese population up there and so they would do like Portuguese style clam bakes, and they would use that linguiça and the vino verde, and that's where I picked that little. So, chef, doesn't matter the size, however, you, however big you want to cut your andouille or sausages, it's just whatever whatever size you want to go, bite size yeah. or just in bigger lengths. So our crawfish are, are it absolutely Slowly doesn't matter. Up. It absolutely doesn't matter, and you don't have to. You're, if you, andouille is not your thing, don't use andouille. And if you want to use something a little bit different, there's no there's no right or wrong answer. But typically or traditionally, it is andouille sausage. All right, so here are our guys. They're starting to wake up a little bit. I want to show you guys some really good fighting. Oh, they should look like they want to kill you, right? And if they're dead, they won't move at all. Like this guy. We're going to get rid of him, right? Maybe. Because uh, crawfish that was, that just was like... Charlie. That's all right. Just like most um, like shellfish, like lobster or anything, they, they're definitely best when cooked live. All right. I like to name all my, uh, that's, my, that's, my, no. Yeah, I like no. to name them all. I went through them all, named them, put on a sheet of paper. It's like, you know, just a, you know, it's homage, like as you're cooking them, okay. you know, just to have the, you know, you name them. They're going to name alive. them like, this one's bah. All right, so <laughs> here is that liquid, and you can see it's definitely at a rolling boil. And now we are just going to add in our crawfish. Let me see. These guys, I want to make sure they're all, Good to go. You definitely don't want to Still put in sleepy. crawfish that aren't alive. All right, here we go. That water is a bubbling. There right. they go. Throw these guys in there. Yeah, they're just asleep. And we had a, you had a statistic earlier that was I think was kind of interesting of the how many hundreds of millions of crawfish are consumed. Or are no are raised? How many how many there they do a season like something in a season? It's like an incredible amount of crawfish I actually hundreds of um, millions of crawfish get millions and most of them are grown in Louisiana on East the Mississippi Texas and Louisiana. yeah and on the Mississippi River all right so now we're adding in our sausage we're gonna give this guy a stir uh-oh everything right, in guys. so obviously we brought down we added a bunch of cold crawfish they were sleeping sleeping the guys so we brought the temperature down so we got to bring it back up to a boil all right, and I'm gonna grab some shrimp and we're gonna throw a little shrimp in there. I promise shrimp is not on the recipe, but you will make some friends if you add in some shrimp. Not everybody likes crawfish. You'll definitely make friends out of me. Um, I'm here for the shrimp, but not necessarily the crawfish. And, and I'm just using large gold shrimp. Yeah, and I, lo I love the fact that you're using the large one. Lo yeah. I love the fact that these shells are on them because that's gonna add to the flavor sure. of the corp bouillon. Obviously, you're making the stock. The shrimp shells have a lot of great flavor in them. Um, there's obviously, I mean, you walk to the, any HEB seafood department has a lot of great, they have the Argentinian red, there's a lot of great Gulf shrimp, there's different sizes, so I mean, pretty much any one you'd want to use, but I do love the shell on for this because the flavor. And it gives you something to peel, right? Everybody's peeling crawfish, yeah. you're peeling your shrimp. All right, I'm going to add a little bit more liquid to this, and I'm actually going to add that liquid in the form of a beer. Where'd the rest of the beer go, chef? Hmm. Look over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. I, I fell for that earlier. All right, and we're just gonna we're just gonna bring this back to a boil for about three minutes, right? And then we're gonna turn this guy off, and again, we're gonna let everything sort of marry together. Sandy's cooking along with you. She's having so much fun. Oh Sandy, my gosh, I love Sandy, this. what are you cooking? Tell me, are you doing the crawfish boil? Crawfish or the New England style clam bake? Crawfish right. with shrimp. There you go. She's got it. Fantastic. All right. So bring this up to a boil, and we're going to let it go for three minutes. Meanwhile, let's check on clam bake. Okay, so this is going really well. Let's look at our potatoes. They're getting soft. 
You can sort of pinch them. They are getting tender. What heat are you over there, Chef? About a I'm medium about, heat? Well, now I'm off. A medium high. Medium high, okay. Yeah. All right. I'm going to grab some of our other seafood, and I want to talk about that briefly. As you're doing that, so, the, uh, the crawfish. So, yeah, the, the heat, obviously, Sandy, we want to make sure you finish the same time here. Yes. Keep, keep your heat adjusted the correct For sure. temperature. Okay. So in front of me, I have the most beautiful platter of seafood. So for the, the New England style clam bake, like I said, typical, typically um, little neck clams. If you can't find little neck clams, you can always use um, mussels. Um, one of my personal favorites, I could eat mussels for days. That's probably the thing that I could eat pounds of, right? I like um, a little neck clam, just a, it's just a little gray, nondescript little clam. These are great for like linguine and clams. Um, one of my personal personal favorites. They're about an inch and a half. The bigger ones are going to be called cherry stones, and then the bigger ones, like the larger ones after that, Co are called cohogs. And ones. those are really good for like stuffies, right? To like stuff them and bake them. I love clams. Clams are great. Like I'm a big fan. Enough. I'm a big fan. They have this like briny ocean flavor that I'm really into. Um, if your clams are open a little bit, I'm trying to see if I can find an open one to tell if they're alive. All you would do is just tap on them gently, and if they close up. Great, they're ready to go. If they don't close up, toss them. Same with the muscles, right? Yeah. So like muscles have a mouth that opens, and as you yeah. tap it, it'll start to close on you. We'll they tap stay open. Him, and he closes up. Perfect. This guy is good to go. So you want to definitely make sure that you rinse your um, clams and your mussels. And then um, some of the mussels will have a like a little beard, like just a little like rough kind of guy on them. It's not really good eating. It's not going to hurt you if you do eat it, but it's just not that enjoyable. So you're just going to peel it off. No big deal, right? You just take a little towel. I would say my, my favorite tip for cooking live seafood to anybody is if cook it the same day you're going to buy it the same day you for sure. to cook it because that way Absolutely. You just, you'll, you'll, have, you'll run the less waste. I'm going to really quickly. Um, I definitely agree. And I always keep my um, seafood on ice in my refrigerator. Now, if you wanted to keep your crawfish, so say you wanted to buy your crawfish on a Friday for a Saturday, no big deal. If you're buying a big bushel, um, you can absolutely keep those guys in a cooler. Just make sure that they are not submerged in water or in ice that drains. They don't like to be wet for too long. And they'll also um, drown if you've got them soaked in water. That's right, and they do like to breathe, so just crack your cooler, right? Um, okay, so we've got, we also have some lobster, which is very typical of that New England style. And then, um, this is some Dungeness crab, and this is for my friend Katie, who is from Maryland. Now, typically um, in Maryland, they cook blue crab with beer and Old Bay, and then just throw those guys on a table with some newspaper, and there's a very specific way to pick a crab. But I could not find any blue crab, so this, this is a little homage to my friend Katie from Maryland. All right, so let's get this seafood into this pot. So everything goes in all at once there? Yep, but first... I forgot, y'all. I got Obviously too excited about the Dungeness crab is ready to go already. I'm going to do a different sausage. I'm going to do this smoked sausage. That is actually one of my very favorite yeah. sausages. The HEB All Natural Smoked. It's just got a good smoke flavor, right? good saltiness. There's nothing like too overpowering in it. You don't get a, a lot of any one spice. I'm a fan. And depending on the size of your pot, you could like change the... You know, you'll cut them smaller or bigger if you've got a lot of room. All right. So we've left those crawfish on for quite some time. Do they come back to a boil? Almost. 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 So how long do you want your, depending on the size of the crawfish, how, how, how long are you going to let your crawfish kind of boil there? Again, like I said, all we really want, all we're looking for is like bringing it up to a boil about three or four minutes um, just to get that heat up, and then we're going to turn them off and let them sit. So I'll just kind of cook yeah. in the liquid, soak in all that for great sure. flavor. All right, I'm going to so put the good. corn in. I like where all this sausage. is headed, which is right to the dinner table for food. All right, so we're going to throw the sausage in with the potatoes. Yes, these are good. These are Again, good. obviously the sausage is already fully cooked. We're just heating it through. It's going to, it's going to drain out some fat, give some good flavor to our I'm gonna do the Maryland corn in crab here. boil. So they're very similar, right, the two of them? with the exception of like the spice. So now I'm gonna add in, I'm gonna put a little bit more corn. I really like the corn. If you have not tried, I will say this as a little plug for HB sausages. If you've not tried our jalapeno sausage, it's really spicy. Are you a fan? And it would, if you wanna kind of, you know, texify or, or self texify your uh, your New England style clam bake, you throw all that stuff in there and I guarantee you that will, uh, it will permeate. It's good stuff. 
All right, here, let me take that towel off so y'all can see what's going on in there. All right, here's our Gulf shrimp. Uh, leaving this, leaving the, the shell, the tails, everything on there, that like that flavor, all that stuff in those oh, shells yeah. is going to flavor this broth. And we're actually going to use that broth to um, drizzle over it's our this fish fume, I'm telling you. Right? OK, so you can sort of see like the difference, right, in the two of them. The Louisiana crawfish is like completely submerged, right? Everything is completely submerged, whereas um, the New England style is it's steaming, right? So we've created that that platform with all of that like delicious aromatics and the corn. And obviously, as those cook, they're going to release their juices in there, yes, the muscles, the clams, so all those good. unique flavors. It's going to be so good. And then we'll throw that last little lobster tail on there. Everybody's going to get along just fine. Oh, it's going to be it's going to be glorious. We're going to cover it. And we're going to let this cook. And like, I'm going to say like an indiscriminate amount of time, right? I'm going to put a little bit more wine in there just to make sure, because just a little bit more wine is OK. Steam it up. Oh, yeah, the no, aroma. I'm just All right. At this point, you should be able to put the lid on and then have a couple glasses of wine or beer yourself. Yes, exactly. And then move exactly. toward the organization right? of the dinner table accoutrement. OK, so we're boiling, right? We've brought it back up to a boil. I'm going to turn this guy off. Perfect. And while this is just sitting here and hanging out, we are going to start our um, clarified butter, so our tarragon butter, and we're going to start our aioli. All right? Love okay, it, I love it. I turned the wrong one off. I'm telling you, I don't know how long I've worked here, and I still can't figure out what knob goes to what burner. Uh, Sandy said I picked up some jalapeno sausage, too. <gasps> Sandy, I knew I liked you from the moment Sandy. you jumped in chat. I knew it. I knew we had a kinship. I knew it's there. All right, really quickly, we're going to start with a little bit of garlic, and I'm going to throw it in this pot. Chop garlic. Chop the garlic. Is it almost time to make the ale ale ole? It is. Ale. It is. It is. Are you excited? <laughs> aioli. I, okay. I love a good aioli. I think you know how I feel about aioli. Um, how did you describe aioli earlier? What so was if it? Mayonnaise, so it's... mayonnaise, which is the, yes. the basically the, you know, kind of where it comes from. The aioli would be the, so that say the mayonnaise is there's nothing wrong with mayonnaise. We're not going to get mad at mayonnaise. Nothing wrong with mayonnaise. But aioli would be okay. the smarter, uh, more successful, better looking cousin, male or female, to the mayonnaise. So it's basically aioli <laughs> is akin, is related to a mayonnaise. It is a just more, more refined, sophisticated version it of. It is a, it's got right? garlic, it's got the it mustard. Does. And again, nothing against good old fashioned mayonnaise. It's good in everything. It's a, it's a fantastic thing. But then you're just taking that mayonnaise and you're just sending it to finishing school. You know what I mean? There like it's go. just, uh, okay. that's just the way, it's the way you're doing so it. So aioli has a, it's a little more sophisticated, all right? Definitely still an emulsion. All right, I'm going to take some of this garlic. I'm going to save some of it for aioli. And the rest of it is going in this pot right here. What's that going to be, Chef? <gasps> Glad you asked. This is going to be our butter, ah. our tarragon butter for to drizzle over that New England style. Drizzle it over. Right? Or use it to dip your bread in. You know, bathe in it, brush your teeth with it. I see you're using eight ounces of European style butter. That's a good I choice. am. The recipe calls for four ounces, but come on. It's butter. Yeah, why would you ever? When it comes to butter, why would you ever follow the recipe? Unless it comes to baking. And then to is it like, it's one of those things that more is, that. more is more? Okay, here we go. More is always We're just going to melt this. All right, I have a question for you, Chef, and it's just a personal question. Sure. Do you draw on butter? Do you clarify? You know, uh, you having a, being it? a person that did not grow up in the uh, Northeast, I do not care about the clarified okay. or drawn butter. I like just straight up butter in any form. If it's melted, I'm good to go. I honestly, though, I think I prefer just good old melted butter because I like yeah. some of that. You know, some of the milk fat adds a little more flavor. And if you burn yeah, it, like you said earlier, sure. little brown butter won't hurt as well. For Shoot. sure. But not that I I'm like hating on drawn butter. I think drawn butter's got its place. I feel like don't make don't make it harder than it needs to be, you know? Yeah. Like... Come Don't on. create more work for yourself. Okay, so for the aioli, we're we're really it's super simple, right? Um, originally in the in the old days, they would crush that garlic on a mortar and pestle, and then they would whip in those egg yolks, and then slowly drizzle in and emulsify that um, that oil. I do not have the arm strength 
to whipped cream or make aioli, and we live in the day of modern conveniences. So, so you're not looking to join any uh, arm wrestling clubs nope. or anything like that? Because if nope. you do emulsify your own aioli, you could definitely look into arm wrestling clubs near nope. you. Nope. I am going to use the blender, and you don't have to have a fancy Vitamix blender. You can use any blender you have. It'll work just fine, right? This one has actually seen, I think, better days. Better days. But we that's a testament the to the quality of the product, the right? Cracked. We, we found out why the front of the blender is cracked. Because Charlotte Sandra likes to tap the front I of the do, blender. I do, I do this to, to get, get this the, uh, so that I could pour. Mystery solved. I can cancel the, the private detectives. The great Sherlock Holmes. The, can, the, the camera's everywhere trying to figure out who broke the Vitamix thing. Who broke thing. it? Now we know. It was me, I did it. I've got okay. closure, that's all so, I want. So the aioli actually has three emulsifiers, right? So three stabilizers. We're using the garlic, which is, has an emulsifying um, property. We have the Dijon mustard also, and then of course we have the egg yolks. And you were telling me earlier, Tompkins, that egg yolks have... Enough ooh, lecithin to emulsify about yeah. seven, eight ounces of oil. So it's okay. a good amount, so you can figure out from there how many you okay. would need. To, same thing with your hollandaise. We had a question earlier. Uh, yeah. Can you explain, though, to those who don't know, the difference between European butter and American butter? Yeah, that is a great question. So a European butter actually has a higher fat content than some of the American butters, meaning that there is still some more milk solids or water. Um, they have a lower percentage of milk solids and water. Does that make sense? So I guess a, an American butter or a European butter is 84%, 83 to 84%? Yeah, I think you're about right on. Right, and then there is some um, like Amish butter, and I think there's a butter oh, from yeah. Wisconsin, because we talked about it one time, <laughs> that has a really high, um, but they, there's some American, um, European style butters that have pretty high. That's a it's great just question. more, it's just more fat, more flavor. Honestly, the American butter is totally fine, especially if you're going to infuse it and stuff. But I, I just love the European butter for things where I'm going to really want that butter flavor. Now, right. a lot of times in baked goods, they say not to use European butter because the higher fat content can sometimes mess with the actual stuff. But it depends yeah. on what you're baking, so you know. Okay, so in our blender, we've got some garlic. We have the mustard. I'm putting in some lemon juice. Um, and I added some lemon zest because I wanted more of that like lemony essence. Super easy. Just, um, I'm telling you, it's the, it's just we just we're just adding more to adding, the mayonnaise. Adding right, we're, we're layering that flavors. Not that butter. mayonnaise wasn't good. She was fine as she was. We're just it's little improvements. That's all. Ooh, sizzle cam. There you go. All right, all right. We're just gonna let that butter sit there and be happy, and we're gonna come back to it in a minute. Not gonna mess with it. Just gonna cover it. It's kind of slowly um, cooking that garlic, taking that bite out of it. Yes. All right. We are going to do some, we're going to add in our egg yolks now. All right. Super easy um, to take that guy out and I'll show you guys how to do it. Separate an egg yolk. I like to use room tip eggs. I feel like they emulsify better. Um, you can get more air into them. I don't know if it's just something I've told myself or if it's actually true, but it's just something I like. We are using raw egg yolks. So, um, there's enough acid in this mustard and in this lemon juice to kind of cook that yolk. Um, but if, you know, immunocompromised or if, um, you know, raw egg freaks you out, we do sell pasteurized eggs. We do. All right, it's so we're going to do two. pasteurized eggs if, it, if having raw, raw egg and anything freaks you out. Ooh, look how pretty this so looks. Good, good find. Okay, throw those guys in there. How long I do you think we've eggs. let that, that crab sit or that crab, crawfish. How long have you let it sit? So yeah. far, Chef, by my watch, and I wasn't keeping score, maybe six and a half minutes, maybe 6.40 if I'm going to be that's good timing, really Tompkins. guessing at okay. it. Okay, we're going to let it sit for a little bit longer while we make this. All right, you ready? We're just going to... emulsion. An emulsion. That was the most anticlimactic thing I've ever <laughs> done, ever. Well, there's not a lot in there, so you don't really get to see. It's not 80 egg yolks. You can't, you can't really see, see well, what's happening. But you will. You will soon. Not a it's lot. It's not very exciting, but it will get exciting. And I'm actually going to put the lid, in, lid on. So at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to drizzle in our oil. I'm actually going to use two oils. The recipe calls for grapeseed oil, which is a great neutral oil. It's great for making salad dressings, aioli, mayonnaise, whatever. Um, but I actually like olive oil. I like the flavor and the color that olive oil imparts. So I'm going to do a half and half. And all we're going to do is just slowly drizzle this in. And you see it starts splattering up on the side. It's happening. The emulsion is happening. The emulsion. 
It gets real thick. Now adding the oil, you're gonna also blend up the, you chop the garlic, but you're gonna get the garlic a little bit finer because it is gonna kind of yes. grab the oil and it'll kind of puree it and process it a little further. And just from there that cam, whoa, go, I think that cam, Rob, that cam, that was like the perfect angle. It was like right inside the little, uh, you could see Sean, it, you had it right down the, the top. Oh, really? And you could just see it starting to thicken up as you were doing it, that was cool. I mean, our camera people are pretty rad. All right, so now I'm gonna add in a little bit of olive oil. I'm using the unfiltered. I love the color of it, the rustico. Again, just slowly drizzle. The aioli will tell you when it is done, right? Um, it will, it'll at some point just stop. It'll be so thick that it won't do anything yep. anymore. It's really good. And if you, if this is the first time you're ever making it at home, it really does exactly what she said. It'll, it'll kind of get to a point where you're like, wow, this is not, it's not one to go anywhere because it'll not just tall get so enough. thick and, uh, and creamy. Just a little at a time, just like that. Do y'all just see the top of my head and not the aioli? <laughs> Look at that. The top see? of the head cam. There it goes. There it goes. Look. That little, you'll see that little... Vortex. The vortex tighten up. Tighten and that's up. you know you're getting to the... Uh, but see, it almost just kind of stops moving. It just kind of becomes... Give it a little like more that. speed and let it get the rest of that... Oil. Sometimes I've done it a million times, but I get really excited when it does a pretty thing. <laughs> hey, an emulsion's not easy to do, no. but you have, you have enough insurance. There we go. See, it stops. mustard egg yolk. See, it's done. Okay, we turn it off and we let it go. Take it off. Now, this is, at this point, you can season your aioli with anything you like, right? So if you wanted to do a roasted garlic, do the roasted garlic. If you wanted to add in some of the Old Bay, right? So, like... Some capers. Capers. Some capers great capers. opportunity for that. If you wanted to do a um, some black pepper... Um, a little more salt, like now's the time. Um, I think personally it would be absolutely delicious with a little Old Bay um, and dip those potatoes in it. I think it'd be fantastic. Here's a, you may or may not know this, this is not meant to be a riddle, but where do they get, where do they get the name Old Bay? Why do they, I'm imagining either it was an Old Bay where they kept a car, that kind of bay, or was it the kind of like, hey, there's this old East Coast I bay where salt. these boats are, where, where, where are we keeping this? That's just my, what do I get Curiosity. if I know the answer to this? <laughs> I don't know, but we have a fact checker who's from the East Coast who will fact check you. So I read that Old Bay was named after a boat. Really? Yeah, that's what I read. I'm too lazy to Google it, so I'm just going to call that a win. We're going to call okay. that the answer. Woo you know, wee! Chesapeake Bay. There you go, Linda, Chesapeake Bay. I'm with you, Linda. I think it was named after a, a specific bay and not a boat. But maybe it was named after a boat. <laughs> ship line. Look at there this. A ship, ship line. line. Okay. Oh my named God. After, so we were both. For it. I was. I was okay. way less. Okay. I'm gonna right. set this you over here. That's perfect. Closer. Let's come back to our guys over here. Okay, guys. Look. This the is 1900s, wonderful. 1900s ship line, Old Bay. There All you right. go. I'm gonna turn this down. All right. We have the best fact checkers in the business. I'm telling you. Okay. So. We can see in here, we've let this sit for a little while. We've let all the flavors come together. Now, if you were going to do multiple batches, right? If you were doing them on the stovetop, um, you could pull this out with um, a slotted spoon, a strainer, um, or even like the straining basket. So like this giant guy right here, like. That's the one I think most people are doing a crawfish bowl are used to. Okay, bigger, right? The big basket. Big basket, multiple, big multiple batches. Um, and again, if you're doing multiple batches on the stovetop, you could absolutely just pull this out, slot and spoon. But what we're going to do is we're actually going to drain this liquid out and we are going to dry season these. So this is a trick that I learned um, through my research, through my, my crawfish studies. Again, not a huge crawfish person, but I wanted to make sure that I got the best information from the people that like it the best. I will tell you this. Uh, earlier today, if yes. you can imagine, we were surrounded by all kinds of live and raw fish and shellfish, which yes. had a certain smell to it, yes. right? the live like smell of the ocean. Now that we've been cooking it, uh, the smell in here, much, much more of a, uh, of a reminiscent of a clam bake or a delicious thing oh and not God, so much amazing. of the briny ocean. So I'm appreciative and I wish you guys could smell it because it smells really, really good. All right, I'm gonna do a quick cleanup over here because I'm gonna show you guys something I'm gonna move some things around. Morris said a couple of veg veggies that work well in the boil are artichokes and Brussels sprouts. Love Absolutely, that. so I've seen that. I've seen people put celery in it, um, all sorts of crazy things. People like, it's a artichokes. canvas, right? 
I like Morris. If you like, if you ever like fennel, and I'm just gonna give a plug for fennel because I'm a big fan of fennel. You I are. I think you should throw some fennel in you that are. and just see what it does because I think I bet it'd be delicious. Okay, so chopped in fennel, front of me, fennel. right here, I have a styrofoam cooler. You can get these. Like, you can get these at H E B. Super great. Um, you can also use a reusable cooler, a Cody, whatever you want. But this is this is something that I that I found was sort of synonymous across all of like all of the people, they put them, or the people that I surveyed, um, people throw them in a cooler and they season them again. So there's a batch of crawfish in here that you can see that I just did. Yep. And um, they take some of that seasoning, right? So let's say that, um, we'll use some of this Zatarans. I also really, I was using this one. This is a really great, this is the all-purpose Creole. It doesn't have as much sodium or salt as say um, the Zatarans. So if you were concerned about all of that salt and you didn't want it to be, more salty, but you wanted that flavor, this is a good option. I like those. I like their good seasonings yeah. in general. Right. Okay. Those lines. So but, a little more seasoning on top. So you're going to toss it in there. Yeah, so I'm going to put some in up. here. Look at that. Look at that. Okay. And then the steam and all the juices come back together. All right. I'm going to grab these guys. I'm telling you, this is, this is my kind of food because it's the right level of salt at all times. This is the right level of seasoning. This is where you want that over seasoned, like really, really good I was meant. For, I was meant for this kind of food. That, so we're that's, just take that's what I've come guy. to the conclusion, so Charlotte. This that's is what, what we look at. Look how pretty that corn looks. Throw those guys in there. So you can keep it hot because the stuff on the bottom may have been getting a little bit less hot. Throw the stuff yep. on top. Bam! Look at that. That's a lot of food. Ooh. Linda, when are you going to be here? Hopefully, you got All the right. wine. We're going to fire up the margarita machine. It's going to be a whole thing. I'm like not strong enough to like aggressively turn it, but um, you can use your tongs. Oh my gosh. Your, uh, those are your crawfish safe tongs, the safety tongs for the crawfish. I, like I know, that. that's a weird thing, right? <laughs> sure. I had this thing earlier where I wanted only, I thought it was more gentle to touch the live crawfish <laughs> with the silicone tongs. As you're, as I'm it, lowering as you're putting them into, into their mind blowingly hot water. Steamy <laughs> hot water. Okay. I'm going to put the lid on, but I put the lid somewhere else. Does anyone? Ah, here we go. And yes, if you're asking, you can find your crawfish safety tongs at your local HEB. All right. Our... We're going to let these guys sit for a couple minutes, and we're going to finish up our other guy really quick. I'm going to put this right over here. And again, all of the, the steam and the juices and everything is just going to come together just like we were cooking a roast or a turkey or, you know, a piece of fish. All right? Right. So you've added that seasoning yep. on there, and you're letting it kind of steep because there's a lot of moisture in there. It's just going to kind of seep in. That smells really good too. Oh man, okay, this is- I can good. smell the wine. Oh, it's so good. It smells like the ocean. It actually smells like the ocean, um, which is one of my favorite things in the world. Um, this that is, pot is killing it. I'm telling you, that's like my favorite new pot. This is the workhorse of this kitchen, this cast iron, like it's Dutch $39 oven. $39 at H-E-B. Five quart, you could do anything in it. Come on. Okay, I'm gonna get set up over here because I am gonna plate this really quickly. I'm starving. You know what I had earlier during all this? We were doing all this setup. Dates. I had some dates he had and dates. some Starburst. That's all I've had. So I know. Okay. this is killing me right now. All right, here we go. This guy. And yeah, that's be... what I love about this meal. So normally, yeah, the recipe is calling you. This is like you know for your own kind of backyard clam bake or the crawfish bake. But this yeah. is like this is turning that special that occasion sound. to a weeknight meal. I love which is this what I sound. Also love. Um, okay, so you can see that everything is done. You can see that our lobster is opaque. All of our um, clams are um, opened up, and you will just discard oh, yeah. any mussels or clams that didn't um, didn't do a thing, didn't open, because those are super dead. And what I like to do <laughs> super dead, I like super that. dead, not just regular dead. They're just super they're dead. extra <laughs> dead. Um, I like to put everything sort of in its own little place. Like I, you know, I like to do all the clams on one side. Yeah, you kind of make it its own little buffet. I do. Give people a chance Don't to Don't worry what they if want. they. Oh my gosh, this is. Well, what be I love so about good. this, as you're as you're doing this yes. in the overhead cam, uh, uh -oh. I, what I love is that your all of that liquid from everything crab, yes. shrimp, yes. lobster, mussels, the the clam, all this liquor is gotten to the bottom of that pot with all the sausage and the corn and the onions and the and that's where it's just gold is. Like I really want to, oh look in your potatoes, our potatoes are so good. I really want to dig yeah, my hands in there. Let's see. There's some sausage. I want to just grab a piece of bread you got over there and just dip it in there and just walk back over, but I'm not Dan, allowed to move. I know, you can't, I'm not to move you can't, spot. you can't move, you're mic'd up. <laughs> All right. 
the potatoes, the, the corn. corn. Okay, y'all, ha there has to be, a, I have to, I, let me have to, it has to be a better way here. Okay, here we go. There you go. There we go. It's time for the, the spoon action. No more right? of this gentle tong stuff. Oh my gosh, there's uh, like these Sandy, like... Sandy was cooking with us, right? Sandy, how okay. is your how is yours looking? Is yours ready? Are we eating? Are you letting those guys rest? Where are you with it? She may have been resting. Are you having a drink? I have a feeling right now Sandy is taking a giant gulp of Chardonnay right now is what I'm picturing in my head. She's about to answer. Okay. But she's is just that... taking a beat to just, you know, everything's resting. She's having a having a cocktail. Maybe it's not a Chardonnay. Maybe it's a Maybe you like straight bourbon. I don't know. You know, who knows? It's Tuesday after all. Sandy, right? what are, 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 I mean, tea is okay. <laughs> tea, we, we support the, like, consumption of tea here. I know this. Right. I feel like Morris is a bourbon and beer drinker. I feel okay. Like, I feel like Morris, more, he may, I may be completely off on that, but I think, I feel like he's. Was Morris our on. friend that knew about all of the. Um, he gave us the tip on the artichokes and yep. the uh, Brussels sprouts. That's a good one. I read somewhere that cauliflower was a thing. I would imagine that in this broth, either one you're going to do, yeah. you're just going to have a really savory yeah. seasoned vegetable, whatever it is. In rehearsal, when I practiced doing this, it took like 30 seconds and was beautiful. This is good. This is real. This is, this good. is, real, this is real life, y'all. Look how pretty and vibrant that corn is. The doctor is. has other ideas. Morris, respectable. I respect that. We'll what did he do? Topo, what did we'll he go say? We'll go for the Topo Chico. Topo Chico. Wait, Morris is having a Topo Chico? Used to be a beer drinker. The doctor has other ideas. So I get that, Morris. Hey, you know what? Morris, I am also a Topo Chico drinker. That sparkling, that sparkling water life. Honestly, at this point, just drink the broth. You know what I mean? Like, there's enough flavor this, in that that you don't need anything. Yo. Mmm, it's so good, and it's so salty like the ocean. I love it. Okay. Love that. Oh, that I little, did it. Uh, well, that piece of sausage right there. Okay. And then Dewey just kind of. Where to go? Trailing out. No, no, no. He, he was in. He was in. Okay. I was wanting to. All right. We've got our butter over here. Now at this point. There you go, more sun butter? tea with honey. I like that. <gasps> okay. So here's our tarragon. Chopped tarragon, a big fan. I wasn't always a fan of tarragon, but I'm a fan now. Um, it has a light like anise flavor to it, like a little bit of a licorice note, but not too, not too overpowering. I just rough chop this. It goes this. great with seafood. There's something it about it. Like you don't get that, it's not super anise -y with no. seafood. It just gives it a really nice finish but I don't want I didn't want to cook in the butter because I didn't want it to lose that beautiful vibrant green so I'm just gonna put it in there while the butter is still warm Terry Terry said I wonder if these broths would be good to use in making brodetto soup honestly Terry uh, either of these broths would be good to make chipino just add some tomatoes oh. to the crawfish and be really All spicy right, the other one absolutely brodetto even just straight brodo just a little Italian Italian broth. This broth is so strain it, it all like and then just drink the it. Ocean. A little bit of crackers or you know those lobster tails. Get that. Throw some Parmesan rinds in the in there. Make right. it more of a some of our butter. I love it, love it, y'all. And there you go, the butter over the top with that garlic. And then the bread. Where's I got our the bread? bread. It's over there. Screaming for the bread right now. You don't have to be shy, Charlotte. I'm not on a diet. You're not going to be offended if I just like aggressively nope. throw it in there. Okay. Da, 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 da. <laughs> butter circus. We could also <laughs> save some of the butter and serve it on the side, but come on, where's the fun in that? But honestly, all I'm going to do is take a like a spoonful of out, and I'm just going to jam my bread in the bottom of the right? bowl like you would mussels. I'm going to grab a beautiful loaf of French. This is actually shibata, which is perfect for this. Come here, you. A little bread. And what I do, this like, just take it, and then you could either serve the bread whole, you could break the bread, shove it on the sides. I mean, it, there's no, like, how should we serve this? So I have to say, like, so looking at all this, right? So we did this. This is under, we're under an hour still. Yeah, still right? Class started at six. So oh you have made two separate meals on the table in 50 so minutes pretty, along so with pretty. an aioli to go along with everything and this is like not just a meal this is like a meal fit for like a, this is like a king's a king spread of all the shellfish and everything else and it's a weekday it's a weekday so it's like you know what i mean like you right. can't i mean like if you're starting off your week like this it can only go down from here right <laughs> oh man okay. i mean up i mean up i'm an optimist only all up right. from here great way to start it out that is, oh, it smells so good. That pot. Really good. All right, now in this guy. 
Now, now it's okay. the crawfish time, right? Crawfish time. You could take like the barbecue butcher paper. Um, I have some sitting right over here. Um, I did, didn't I, Tompkins? I, I did. I put it down. Underneath? Stand by. This guy underneath? right there here. Go. There it is. This stuff. Oh, Sounds I lost like... it. Like this stuff right here. This stuff is fantastic. You could take this, roll it out on your dining room table, and throw these crawfish on. Um, I'm going to do something. I'm going to do a little plated guy because... But this stuff is amazing. This stuff is absolutely amazing. Use it all the time. Chef, I have a question for you. Yes. Do you think you could throw me a piece of the andouille sausage from there or too risky? I mean, I could. <laughs> I might get in trouble. I got to know. I got to know, Chef. If all I right. have to dive for it, it's going to be a no-go. Right. Woo, steam. Oh, yeah. Look at this. Look at these guys. Do you see all that and how beautiful that looks? Are you going to do the full, I kind of want to see you dump this in there. <laughs> you want to, I'm afraid that if I do that, it's going to be like crawfish everywhere. Places. Again, take your, get your, get your crawfish safe tongs and deliver it a little more deliberately. There you go. Any basket will do, uh, any plate will do at this point. It's like, come on. I mean, like, I'm pretty sure the, like, the paper on the table Man, look at that. So this is like, you know, put it on the table, put it All in right. front of everybody on your dining room table, turn on, the, turn on Netflix, you know what I mean? And just like, you know, make it like a crawfish Netflix. Oh, I can't do night. it. I'm nope, gonna make a too mess. Many. It's too probably, many. It'll probably, it'll be like when too the milk many. gets frozen and you try to get that last little bit and it just goes. Here we go, this is perfect. That's ice. I, I like mean, it's super easy, milk. super easy. And that's it. And again, Morris, just like you said, the more stuff you put in there, the more gold you're going to get when you're putting it all on the table. I'm going to try that vegetable thing. Like I like the artichokes in there. That sounds fantastic. The Brussels sprouts, I totally get. Are you the there Brussels for the sprouts? Are like you get the, the Brussels sprouts. You get the uh, the cruciferous. You get that little kick of that, you know, Ooh that goodness. Y'all, look how pretty this looks. I just used my one seventy-five cent word for the day. Cruciferous. cruciferous. That was my one. It's probably for the week for me. Okay. Look at that little guy. And that sausage. Crawfish on the butcher paper, that's right, or in your favorite vessel. Boom. Oh, Maybe just you a couple more shrimp on there for I just chef, can't. You want some I'm more shrimp? Be. I was thinking about eating one. I'm going to dip this in that aioli. Yeah, I kind of want to dip some of that in the butter, too. Okay. Boom. There it is. Doesn't get any better than that. Boop. A great dish to share. Boom. Crawfish slash clam Blake. Blake? Blake? No, nope. Blake's on here. Clam Blake. Let's call it a bake. Clam, New England style clam bake, which was fantastic. Louisiana crawfish boil, like super easy, guys. And again, it's about how you feel and what you want. Um, there's no right or wrong, wrong way to do it. There's just a couple of fundamentals, right? And take so, it from extravaganza, big event, right? to a weeknight, you know, Whew. little celebration. Layering in that flavor. So we're layering flavor and, um, you know, a little bit of timing and everything comes out beautifully. So Boom. check out all those delicious, well all done, that shellfish. Chef. Thank you so much. So um, to check out new classes, you can go to hb.com um, slash classes. And to see some classes that you may have missed, you can always go to our YouTube channel and check out um, this class and any other classes um, that you may have missed. Thank you so much for joining me today on this Tuesday. I enjoyed having you guys here. Tompkins, thank you so much. And everybody. Pleasure's all mine. Have a good weekend. Week. Day. It's Tuesday. That's right. See? Have a good night. You fooled yourself too, right?